healthy organization will have a culture of accountability. And this must begin with the leader. Healthy leaders choose accountability. To be accountable means to be responsible to others, to allow others to call you to account. An unaccountable person, on the other hand, will answer to no one outside of himself. Jesus, of course, was accountable. He set us a perfect example. He lived and ministered under the authority of his heavenly Father. As he said in John 8, I do nothing on my own authority, but I speak just as the Father taught me. And as a child, Jesus was also accountable to his earthly parents. Remember in Luke 2, he went down with them, came to Nazareth. He was submissive to them. By his example, Jesus taught us that in order to have true authority, one must first be under authority. The centurion in Matthew 8 was accountable. Remember what he said. He said, I, I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go and he goes and to another, come. And he comes and to my servant, do this and he does it. The centurion exercised sound authority because he was first under authority. Consequently, he was able to recognize the true authority of Jesus. And he said to him, only say the word and my servant will be healed. Even Paul, the great apostle, was accountable in his ministry. Look at his words to the Corinthians. We have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Too often, people think of Paul as an independent ministry, accountable to no one but God. But Paul was sent out by the leaders of the church at Antioch in Acts 13. Let's read this. After fasting and prayer, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. And Paul remained accountable to that spiritual community at Antioch throughout his ministry. Every time he would return from a long ministry trip, the church would gather together and Paul would share what had happened. He was choosing accountability. Paul was a healthy leader. Healthy leaders choose accountability. Paul also willingly made himself accountable to the leaders of the church at Jerusalem. Uh, to the Galatians, he said, I went up and I set the gospel before them, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles, in order to make sure that I was not running or had not run in vain. Now, Paul wasn't doubting that he had the true gospel. He knew he had the true gospel, but he was choosing accountability. In particular, Paul demonstrated accountability in the issue of finances. When talking about sending money to help the believers in Judea in the time of famine, he wrote this, we take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift that's being administered by us, for we aim at what is honorable, look at this, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. Now, if anyone in the early church could have said, hey, I'm the great apostle directly called by God. I've been to the third heaven. I've raised the dead. I've written half of the New Testament. Who are you to hold me accountable? It was Paul, yeah? And yet he chose genuine, deep accountability. How about you? So accountability is central to character and to effective leadership. Leaders are given trust by their communities. When you accept a leadership role, you're receiving trust from your community. And your responsibility as the leader comes with high standards. And because you're serving God, we would hope the very highest of standards. This means some form of accountability must be in place to ensure that these standards are being met by the leader and to ensure that the trust his community has given him is being honored. 
and is not being abused. Look at what Paul said to the Corinthians in uh, 4.2. Moreover, it is required as stewards that they be found faithful. As a leader, you're a steward. You must be faithful. You must be accountable. Now, here are some specific areas of accountability that should be maintained in a Christian leader's life and ministry. Integrity of life, truthfulness in word, purity in thought, honesty in action, high moral and ethical standards of behavior. Integrity of motive, seeking the highest good of the community before his own benefit true servant leadership, integrity of finance, not taking advantage of your position for personal gain and providing honest financial reports. Then integrity of organization, ensuring that the right systems and relationships are in place and maintained in the organization, both within like accounting, legal systems, and so forth, and also without involving relationships with the government, for example. Then integrity of doctrine, that all of our teaching and doctrinal positions must be sound. Integrity of decisions regarding the community, putting the will of God first before all temporal expediency and gain. Then integrity of relationships, working through conflict with people and not using your position of power to unfairly settle personal issues. Then integrity of accountability. Relationships of genuine accountability must be in place, not merely the form of them. We're not just ticking the box. It must be authentic. Every leader at every level must be genuinely accountable in these areas. Healthy leaders will be accountable ones. A leader with godly character will not fear accountability, but will rather choose it. Where there is unaccountability and independence in a leader's life, there will be trouble sooner or later. An unaccountable leader is a dangerous leader, and the more gifted he is, the more dangerous he is. When leaders choose accountability in their own lives and leadership, then that nurtures a healthy culture of accountability across the life of the organization or church.